One of the most well-attended sessions here at the American Academy of Dermatology annual meeting in Miami was about controversies in dermatologic drug therapy. Dr. Stephen Warburton moderated this session. One of the controversial questions that came up is whether short course corticosteroids increase the risk for osteonecrosis. And Dr. Wolverton responds. My thesis is two to three weeks, not enough time for that to happen. The statistics, if you go through this chance association type statistics, it's pretty, um, pretty clear that the risk is small. Uh, or I should say there's, there's some spontaneous reports that, that occur. Back in the 1960s, they started having individual case reports that were uh, showing that as early as you know, a week or less of the corticosteroids uh, were at risk for osteonecrosis. Again, the case report just brings that it's a possibility. Now, if you have a, an individual case where you can stop the drug and they get better, we call that the D-challenge step, and then you restart the drug and they get worse again, then the case report gets you to a reasonably high level of certainty. But the point is with osteonecrosis, which synonyms are avascular necrosis and aseptic necrosis, with osteonecrosis, they typically aren't reversible if they get very far along. So even if the drug was just an innocent bystander and they happen to have osteonecrosis for other reasons, you can't get information that's meaningful from stopping prednisone and they improve, because most of the time they won't, and restarting it, you can't do that because it's a high enough risk that it wouldn't be ethical that if you had any suspicion of the steroid role, it wouldn't be ethical to restart the steroid on that particular type of high-risk reaction. I went through a little bit of statistics on what makes, um, what the statistics of chance association, and I think it's easy enough to explain to the audience, if, if some data exists that probably on the average year, one out of 100 adults receives a course of prednisone, and that's, I think, a reasonable estimate. And then you then add the fact that there's 10 to 20,000 cases of osteonecrosis per year in this country from the best data we have. And if you know that up to a third to a fourth of those patients uh, occur in an idiopathic basis, idiopathic meaning cause unknown. So if that translates to about 2,500 to 3,000 a year that are just going to be for no good reason. If that's the case, then the chance association with the steroid course and the osteonecrosis would occur maybe to, if, if I broaden the range 25 to 75 times a year in this entire country. And you put that together with some trial lawyers who are eager to look for cases. That some of those cases not only go to court, but they get sued. But I also went through the fact, um, and, and before I met successfully sued. And so I also went through the fact of how the problem actually occurs. And it's just not conceivable that two to three weeks of a prednisone course can cause enough changes in the bone marrow that chokes off the blood supply to the hip, the shoulder, the knee. Um, usually they have to be on the drug long enough to get what we call Cushingoid changes. That means they've got a moon face, buffalo hump, a lot of fat distribution back to the center of the body. That occurs maybe after two or three months, and that seems to be a reasonable surrogate for what happens in the bone marrow as far as too much fat being deposited there. And if somebody's at risk for coagulation problems anyway, those two things together may be enough to make the blood supply lost to the bone. But, and then lastly, I went through all the available studies for the two biggest populations, lupus, erythematosus, and uh, renal transplantation, and went back into the 1960s, up to, to, up to 2008. And in the lupus patients, the soonest that the osteonecrosis ever occurred was three months. In the renal transplantation patients, the, uh, there's two studies out of the many we looked at that had the earliest case around a month. So could that be a chance association, uh, perhaps? The fact that it occurred at a month, if we keep our therapy to two to three weeks below physiologic doses, is that enough? Perhaps. Now, there's no doubt the steroids, oral uh, corticosteroids, do cause osteonecrosis with sustained courses. But in those populations, probably six months or more of continuous therapy is needed before you start getting any cases. And the average duration somebody's on the drug is often two, three, four years or more before they get this complication, not two to three weeks.